So we, I mean, even though I hit recording, we, you know, don't have to start yet. Um, I also have hit recording. Oh, it's on. Is this a, this is this is a fringe begun. encounter? It might be if you if you decide to let me air it afterwards. Well, um, you know, obviously you don't know me. I don't know you. Uh, so I'll tell you that um, my relationship with you is more important than winning some point or being correct. And if at any point, you know, I say something or you say something that makes you uncomfortable, we can take it out or you can just not release it. Right. Um, I just wanted to have the conversation and uh, I figured other people would want to hear. Well, you came at me with a recommendation from someone I liked quite a lot before he ghosted me, so I, I'm good. I'm good. You, you come Great. well recommended. I, <laughs> that's very flattering. You come super highly recommended, and um, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of people that uh, are looking forward to hearing this. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I'll just say, like, you know, I'm a bit of a weirdo. I have an odd sense of humor. So if I say or do anything that, like, crosses a line or a boundary or makes you offended, just let me know um, so uh, so I can learn. Right. If Spinach I raise my, teeth. my hand, I'm terribly offended. Okay. All right. My safe word is um, galactic banana. So hopefully we won't have to use it. Well, get my mic right here. You said something right. about wanting to pick my brain in the approach. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it uh, seems to me that uh, you have some locusts and honey in your beard, and uh, and I think that's very interesting because in you know as Paul calls it, this corner of the internet, there's a lot of things being said, not all of them cogent, and. Uh, the things that I've heard you say um, ring like a bell in my ears. And, um, and you know, I, I also have some locusts and honey in my beard, right? And, uh, and Are we just I'm... going down on the wrong lady, or is that code for something I don't understand? <laughs> John the Baptist. John the Baptist of the Bible, you know, as a meme, right? The, uh, the crazed prophet living in the wilderness um who eventually speaks truth to the right power and loses his head and i'm guessing that um given your connection with what is true and with what is real um you've had your head cut off a few times for speaking the truth as have i and uh if i'm wrong about that you know i'm i'm aiming for it uh, the more literal incarnation but <laughs> i haven't i haven't poked the right nest yet Mm, well, you know. I, so the assassins I've, continue to fail. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's always that phrase, the tall poppy gets cut, and uh, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, but the wheel that continues to squeak gets replaced. Um, <laughs> but, I, I, you know, I don't know. I, you know, it's odd just because I've, you know, in preparation for this conversation, I've watched... Uh, several hours of your uh, videos and um, as many people have fawned before I agree that you have a very unique perspective that um, I would like to pick apart um, you know I have to confess that I found your latest video with Paul to be you know while illuminating I I found some of his answers to be a little disappointing and I wanted to um, I wanted to expand on the things that you were trying to get at the things that you were trying to get him to say um, and uh, you know if I'm way off base just let me know but um, you know you you touched on specifically you know why do Christians suck so bad right and he, he didn't really give you a great answer right um well why is it that they seem to believe one thing and do another right paintball for jesus it's it's right there it's so obvious right city council it's right there it's so obvious um he explained but, that though is they lost their teeth when churches became voluntary organizations so i mean i understand why he was as uh, evasive or or wily as I like to say about that particular interview but there's 
unless unless there's like secret orders of super religious people that I don't think I don't think you could be the Christianity that that we'd like to envision uh publicly so you don't think it's possible given the state of the world like given what we have to participate in uh like maybe maybe but i think it it would be a thing where like it wouldn't be advertised like if you find the right people and you live right enough then they come get you and be like we see what you're doing come with us and it's not going to be a like a missionary thing. Mm. What do you mean they come get you? Well, Who's I, they? Well, I, I heard that's how uh, the certain intelligence agencies recruit. Is like you don't apply; they find you when you're. I, I figured it'd be a, the same thing, mm. where like God mm. would send them, like God would highlight you to them, right? And then they come right. get you. If the if the Bible is so divinely inspired, why aren't the hierarchies and the bureaucracies right? Mm, no, no, no. Okay. No, it. Um, well, yes. Why aren't they? But that's not my point. Is that like the the people that are doing the real work, fighting demons and stuff, aren't aren't going to be trying to get people that watch TV? I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I um, I grew up in, in the Catholic Church, and I have my own kind of interpretation of what happened. Um, it just seems like the problem of Seattle. Like, the church, the big C church, you know, has a lot of problems. You know, corruption, theft, abuse. And the people, the good people, the people with any ounce of virtue and integrity saw what was happening and they just left. And so the same goes for Seattle, right? Who remains? Who remains? And to me, it just seems like the people that aren't bothered by corruption, theft, and abuse. Uh, I'm not sure what the Seattle reference is. Well, Seattle is like got a pretty bad, like homeless problem, pretty bad crime problem. And so there's been a mass exodus from Seattle. Uh, okay. And I wonder... You know, I wonder what it is like to be the kind of person that doesn't mind stepping over people on their way to work or doesn't mind having bullets fly through their windows. And similarly, I think about the kind of person that doesn't mind that Ravi Zacharias was found to be the most productive, you know, Christian apologist and rapist of seemingly all time or doesn't mind that the Catholic Church scandal occurred, right? Well, um, the Catholic Church, as I understand it, has a telescope named Lucifer. So there's not even the deep hidden issues with the Catholic Church for me. But um, And like whatever they have in the vault, they're keeping in the vault. So I, I, it's hard, hard for me to trust any of that. And that, that whole thing where the, the Pope is like, Did, this one didn't die, he just stepped down. That was like a giant red flag, and like I'm a religious, so. But there's so many people that are loyal to the faith that they're gonna stay loyal to the faith, and I can. It's like you can't get people off of Facebook for the same reason. I mean, you can tell them that like there was a DARPA program called Life Log that closed the day before, and it just doesn't matter because that's how they keep in touch with their family or. Like, I have to stay here to keep an eye on the people I care about. So, you know, motivations can come from all sorts of different directions. Yeah. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Um, you said, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. You said something about trust, right? You can't trust that, the you know, the, the Catholic Church or the Lucifer example, which I'm sure they would just say, it means morning star. It's harmless. Uh, <laughs> um, what do you trust? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't know what to make a reality most of the time. Um, this is exactly where I want to be. I, I suffer from the same problem. It seems like a feature and a bug. It's, um, 
like my I have this the thing that's most like the things that stick with me um I guess would be what I trust the most and like are you familiar with the Kaibashi Nairu from Star Trek? I think that's the right pronunciation. Uh, the it's the, the unwinnable scenario the, test right, right. for the captain. Ko- Kobayashi Maru. That one. That one. That I. That's my hunch about this place. Mm. A lot of the times, it's like you know, you're they they put you in here to see how you do, but you can't really win. Unless you cheat, well, well I don't know. <laughs> so that that's a big thing. So, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to stay there for a second. I guess um, my intuition, my the things I intuit that stick with me are are the are the closest thing to things I trust. Do you find you're highly intuitive rather than analytical? Hmm. I wouldn't say highly intuitive, but I, mm-hmm. um, I, I, not, my analysis, my analytical mind has can't hold a handle to. I mean, it can't, it can't poke and prod away under my intuition. So I, it's, I don't, that's I don't know what to make of it, but that's they're both there, and one wins. Just because, I don't know, but it does. My entire life, I have had this incredibly strong feeling that the things that are happening in front of me are not, they aren't, you know, like, I assume you've seen The Wizard of Oz. A couple of them, yeah. And, uh... You know, they get to that final chamber and they see a giant floating head and incendiary uh, pyrotechnics going off all around them and a giant booming voice, right? And and I just get the feeling that there's this man behind the curtain. And it's not necessarily when I look at alphabet federal agencies or... (laughs) The federal federal defense budget or, uh, you know... Um, the Catholic Church, like it, it, it goes down to my personal relationships. I mean, it's you know, it starts with my parents, right? Where I can just hear them. I know you're talking about me. I know you. I, I know there's something happening there, and I'm not privy to it, right? And it is affecting my reality, and this has led me to a lot of problems because it's very difficult to employ someone that thinks this way. It's very difficult to um, get to know someone who thinks this way, right? Because we're constantly skeptical, constantly questioning what's going on around us. And if that has any purchase with you, you know, take it and run with it. If it, if you don't, I've got plenty of other things on this list of notes. <laughs> Whoa. Um, with regard to employment, it's like, I got this thing where people can't seem to see the connection between evolution and slavery and everybody's just okay with it. And, and I, I have a hard time faking being okay with things. Um, but I don't, for the most, for the most part, I don't get like, I sus- I'm suspicious of people. I just assume that they're swept up in things that I have rejected and like they're they're fully bought in and so that's why it's hard to but it's not i don't think i don't assign them like that they're in and i and i'm not and they're keeping me out of it so much as just they're not in on it but they're true believers so they can't even hear me more often have you ever wanted to buy in Oh, if there's been times, I mean, it's, it's like a a self betrayal, but it's like, if I could like get amnesia and, and go along for the ride, I, it'd be so much easier. And I, I feel that, but it's not a genuine want. mm. Yeah. It's more like you want relief rather than 
It's like, man, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. Yeah, like, I when I was um, when I was a young man, probably in my twenties, I became enamored with sleight of hand and card magic, and um, I practiced it and studied it and learned quite a bit and i w i became very disillusioned at how simple these magic tricks were and just how incredible people like they thought you were doing something unbelievable when it was really it was like no it's right here in my hand <laughs> you know? and and i started to realize that these tv commercials were doing sleight of hand and this this uh, you know letter from HR had some sleight of hand, and this professor's grading scale had some sleight of hand, and all of a sudden I saw the deception everywhere, and I, you know I like, like I have this age-old argument with my father about whether or not ghostwriting is moral. Are you familiar with ghostwriting? Yeah, yeah. Nom de plure, right? The uh, concept that you write like, a book and then you put somebody else's name on it right and and his argument is hey you know are you saying that mark twain is a liar <laughs> I'm like yes yes you know like it it's it's fundamental who wrote this right the idea that you can put somebody else's name on this book is what else is the de definition of deception that's fascinating because i have i have the opposite angle is it really it's a lot more easy to be honest if you don't have to tie your your name to it mm. I, knew, I knew you would hurt my brain dude it's like because you can say things when you're as as a nobody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know exactly what you mean that you can't say when they can come after your friends and family for you saying it so it's a protection yeah i i oftentimes mistrust people who change their names people that require you to call them doctor instead of phil right somebody who requires you to call them admiral instead of well, any, Dave. anybody trying to put words on your mouth or control your speech is suspect but like, I wasn't I just born see right, with this name. With uh, you weren't you weren't. It doesn't say Gaius Grimm on your. No, no. That, your... But I'm not blood to the name that my legal fiction is either. So I mean, I'm not particularly tied to it. Um, this the name came about because when I was coming of age, I guess. So like coming of age movies are high school to college age. And when that in in this reality for me, what was going on is like I was retreating from meat space into the internet, and mm -hmm. they, and they went from you can just be a handle to what's your name, so they could tie it to your legal self, and so what was Grim Grizz turned into Griswold Grim, and then it took a long time to stick with the middle name, but. That turned out to be Gaius. I was I thought it was going to be Asmodeus or Amadeus for a while. It was back and forth between those two, and then ended up being Gaius. So I could I could see the dilemma. They're all cool. Uh, I'd be happy happy to like make my legal fiction match, but that's like a matter of five hundred spare dollars and a bunch of paperwork. So I haven't. But uh, it's it's a nightmare to do. Um, yeah. So like I've I've heard you describe kind of your path as, like you said, moving out of the meat space into the digital space. And you described yourself as an NPC, um, or at least I use it embodying as a verb. Yeah. NPCing. Yeah. Like that's, what is, that's what people do. Because like when, when people, it, the identities are contextual. Like the type of, well, from what I've seen of people, so it's not just me, but for a, a fair number of people, how you act is altered significantly by either where you're at, the context of where you're at, or who's in the room. 
Like, if your parents are in the room, you're going to be a different you than if it's you and your friends. So, in that and if you're that yeah, if you're if you're in a room full of work colleagues, right, and you fart, your identity changes immediately. Yeah. Um, and it stinks, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I got you. Both I knew ways. I'd get you. Both I got you, dude. Fart jokes, um, jokes, they always work. Uh, hey, you know, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere when it comes to uh, such a such a figure as yourself. Um, yeah, I, I've I've noticed myself uh, retreating um, throughout my life. I. I had such trouble. Um, it, it seemed to start in puberty and just continued. And, um, you know, like, it's, it's interesting that the world states that they want non neurotypical people, they want out of the box thinkers, they want speak people to speak truth to power. But when you actually do it, I find that they have no appetite for it at all. And so I feel like I have this choice to make to either play this unbelievably deceptive and oftentimes downright harmful game just to get a paycheck, just to keep my health insurance, right? Um, or I can speak the truth and be shown the door and sometimes I wonder you know have I sold out um you know I've gone to a lot of people sought a lot of help and received a lot of diagnoses but none of them have really changed the fact that I look at really tall apartment buildings with just people in these cubes in these cages and I get sad right like, how is that? How is that okay? Right? Like, I look at the highways, and some some people see a beautiful technological marvel of traffic flow and 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 you know transportation nodes, and I, I just see people stuck in these metal boxes. I, do you get what I'm saying? I I don't know. It's a little there's. There's a distinction that's not obvious, and I think if you if you grow up in the water, you know how fish don't see water. It's it's really hard to come across. But like, you want what's best for the public. But the mistake is you're not public; you're a private person, and public is is essentially the lowest common denominator. So. Oh, how do I say this without being offensive? Oh, I'm good, dude. It's let her, let her rip. If if they're happy that way, let them. I mean, if if that's the, the the what they're capable of, then that's fine. But we we get this whole people are all created equal. But there's also the the way it seems like it works to me as far as I can tell, is that if you let the beast inside you run your life, then there's a whole cadre cast of people who are completely okay with, like, that's the flag that means I can feed on you. And the people that live in those boxes are pursuing their dreams that way, I think are being fed on and serving those that other cast and i don't know i I went through this whole truth or faith we're like man if if people would just see what i knew they'd stand up and things would change but that's not true because the blindness is willful and and so you're just you just ostracizing yourself by trying to wake people up to things i don't no i i hear what you're saying um they've chosen it essentially not necessarily consciously but like just 
the little like like boiling a frog choosing it like oh this water's fine no that's okay it's just a little it's fine it's fine i'm safe you're safe everything it's fine it's fine and with no they don't they don't do the calculus of as it approaches the limit how that's going to play out for things yeah yeah and i find and that now we're, and and because the technology accelerates things like the limits we're approaching are within our lifetime whereas it, like as as soon as 50 60 years ago i mean nobody could have foresaw how quickly things shift but they're, it, it's shifting that way in front of us now. Like I, there is no way. Like I, I expected everybody, everybody to be like, yeah, shoot me up with that experimental injection that was developed at warp speed under the guy who invented space force. But they did it anyway because it's like wow. And then, and then, like I argue with people that that are seemingly intelligent enough that I respected their intelligence up until, and then just, I don't know, man. The The power of self-deception is Im- impressive, especially after uh, they've committed to an irrevocable act. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of irrevocable acts that you have to commit to. Um, the concept of the mortgage really bothers me. Right. The life meter? You buy this thing that you don't own. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard the other day that you don't own anything that you that they can take away from you. And I think that's right, you know. And then I started wondering what can't they take away? The inch. There's this uh from V for Vendetta. Mm-hmm. The scene when when he's torture when the guy the hero is torturing that poor girl, um, the, the the letter she wrote on the thing, is like there's an inch inside of you, and they you have to give it to them. They can't take it. And that's I don't know. That's it. Have you given your inch? Mm. Not to the government. <laughs> There's been individuals that have gotten it out of me, but I don't know. Sometimes there's, I think there's still a piece in here worth holding on to. So do I. The only reason I'm not um, the only reason it hasn't been game over is because I have to have some hope that that I'm going to find it, whatever it is, you know, the place where people don't demand it from me, you know, a community where people protect me from it, a relationship where I can truly say to someone, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, and, and they say, that's okay. That's okay. How old are you, if you don't mind? 33. It, it's about time for you to start building that place. I don't know. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, Speaking of which, before, I, before this ends and I don't ask, what the hell was the pearl? I was living at a house in Silver Spring, Maryland, um, with a NASA engineer and a very high level software programmer. And, um, I had sort of a lowly position compared to them, um, buying things for the government. And, um, I, uh, You know, here in the Washington, D.C. metro area, um, your status is, you know where you're at. (laughs) They always remind you exactly where you're at, right, in the pecking order. And I was 
um, you know, I was sitting on the bench, so to speak. And, um, and so I really had this yearning and this hunger to do something, to make something of myself, to set myself apart and say like, yeah, okay, you know, you may have this great job, you may have this great life, right? But like, I did something. I built something. And um, I was listening to a podcast. It was The Portal with Eric Weinstein. And um, episode 19, he had his brother on, Brett. And they discussed a very incredible story about how... Did the telomere episode? That's right. That's right. Um, a scientist named Carol Greider essentially stole Brett Weinstein's genius realization about the link between senescence and telomere length. And um, this episode set my brain on fire because up until that point in this sort of space of podcast, it was Joe Rogan and aliens and Bigfoot and hunting and elk and, you know, when Eric kind of came to the scene, it was like, hey, maybe this is that same energy with a little more a little more polish and a little more intelligence. And so I was interested. And then when that episode came out, I was I was dumbfounded. I was like, this is it. This I mean, this is what you know, the This is the Messiah. Like <laughs> sell everything you own and follow him. And um <clears throat> I uh, joined Eric's Discord, which was exploding, and um, and I started making friends. I started making contacts, and uh, Eric would pop on, and I would talk to Eric. You know, just a just a question here, a comment there, right? But I was enamored. I was enamored with the adjacency to power, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I uh, I learned that Eric was interested in projects. He was interested in things that people wanted to do. And um, I would spend all night in the voice chat just, just talking to people who claimed to be physicists, right? people who claimed to be <laughs> physicists, um, you know, people who claimed to be software engineers, people who claimed to be um, very intelligent, very productive people. And um, I found myself in a little group of, of friends. Um, you you know, probably know some of them. And, um, and we started talking. And as we were talking about world building and community building and, you know, doom fetishizing and, you know, etc. I, this idea struck me about how to make what we were doing online, just a little bit better. I wasn't going to revolutionize it. I wasn't going to reinvent the wheel. I was just going to take what we were already doing and just move it one step farther. Um, I don't know if you've ever played a video game like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley, but there's, you know, um, this top down kind of view of a little avatar walking around. Right. And all I wanted to do was create a game where you could load in as a little avatar and walk around the world and when you came across somebody else right oh hey how's it going right oh what's up man right you would be able to hear them as you got closer and then as you got farther and farther away you wouldn't be able to hear them anymore so people would naturally come together um and and i've noticed that in digital space your geo location you know the the part of the reason why you remember where you put something is because it has a physical location. Mm. And so online classes, online presentations have no purchase in people's minds because it's not a physical place. They just turn the camera off, hit mute and zone out. This would allow you to be engaged. This would allow you to be a physical person in the space. Um, and then I had the idea of whatever you wanted to present would just be projected on the terrain. And so I um, took my savings <laughs> and I bought a really nice gaming laptop. That was the field. Found the field, bought the field. And I downloaded a free video game creation engine known as Unity. Um, not knowing anything about computer programming, I began to chip away. 
chip away, chip away, chip away. And after weeks of just all night chipping away at C, C sharp, I mean, you know, it, it, it must have looked like um, it must have looked like a baby trying to drive a Mack truck. <laughs> Right. Uh, well, and, that probably would have been a lot more entertaining, but yeah, I get your picture. And probably more successful, too. So um, I eventually got it to the point where I had a little character that could walk around in a world, and I projected Eric's work onto the ground. So he was just walking through geometric unity and hops vibration and just all the bullshit that Eric would talk about. Um, and I had the opportunity with an audience with him to present this to him in front of the community directly to him. And uh, he said, okay, next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in that moment, I realized that I had poured all of my emotional validation, all of my hopes and dreams right that this was going to make me a person mm. this was going to make it so that i could play the game i could be in the world and not of it right i could afford food and shelter and health care without having to sell my soul i was going to be able to make my own destiny and and it just got thrown away and i realized how delusional i had been that's in a that hard moment. wake up. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad it happened. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> but that's 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 no small thing. Like, whoa, whoa! I've been delusional for whoa. That was a long time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I I felt pretty embarrassed that I let this man like get inside my head and. um Hope's a hell of a drug, bro. <laughs> I, you know, I closed the laptop, or excuse me, I opened the laptop, I downloaded Call of Duty Warzone, and I got to popping heads, you yeah. know. Um, and uh, I did that for you know, two years, it seems like. You know, I was just so disillusioned. And um, it was around that time that I just started hating Eric like just overwhelming resentment and i started to see some truths that i didn't see before like he had a lot to say and nothing to do um i got a question yeah why did brett ever stop talking about the telomeres what a good question what an interesting question you just had there grim grizz i know hmm. right Hmm, right? Carol Greider seems to be a real person. The Nobel Laureate Society appears to be a real institution. His research, theoretically, should be all there. Email doesn't go anywhere, right? I you went to the Jack's website, and there's a whole paragraph that says, like, our in-house shit found he was full of crap. But that seems really difficult, like, that a single paragraph would defeat such a thing as, like, you know... um, the way we're doing research on medicine is dangerous, but eh, so that's, 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 I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if, if somebody stole a Nobel prize from you, would you just let it go? Yes, but I wouldn't let the harm of the thing that was wrong continue and be silent unless I was like really well paid. For shutting up. Uh, I.e., oh, these lab rats are hmm, seemingly causing us to inject massively toxic pharmaceuticals into the market ubiquitously. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. I just, since you were closer than I was, I thought maybe you found out why, why it became a non-issue. I was like, I, I went as far as to like almost map the uh, Rats of Nim movie to the story in that podcast because like, <laughs> there's lots of parts that that fit real well. But the video game was called Lab Rat. The idea was that we were lab rats on a chemistry table. I it was, 
you know. I don't I, think I was, that's inaccurate. I, was, <laughs> I think that's the goodest. That, so you can't be too close to the truth. Uh, that's, I don't know. People don't like it. It's it's black mirroring. It's, I call showing people things they don't want to see, like reflecting things they don't want to see that's true, I call black mirroring. Mm -hmm. and, and that some things are too, hit too close to home, and they show you so you can't. But. Yeah, well, you know, what hit too close for home for me was the confirmation that I was, in fact, a loser, right? Just like I had thought, just like I was hoping wasn't true, is that I was just some guy sitting in a hot attic wood panel room in Silver Spring, Maryland. A loser. And it, I mean, it took, it took longer than I'm caring to admit to reach some some break in the ice where I could just take a breath, you know? Um, and I mean, to this day, like, I still, I still wonder, like, you know, what am I? <laughs> Who am I? Like, you're a soul of equal value to every other soul on this planet. Um, do you believe that? Well, if I don't believe it about you, then it doesn't leave much for me to think of myself. <laughs> but I, I, I have a note here that says you can't love anyone until you love yourself. You said that in uh, in one of your previous videos. That's that's one of the things they they pitch to to me a lot. I, Do you I, think it's true? I sort of. I sort of think it's bullshit, right? I love Star Trek, and I don't love myself. Um, I think they might have it backwards, but what the hell are you supposed to tell someone who won't love themselves? I also think Sylvia's might have started giving birth based on the noises I'm hearing in the background. So... um it's the, I took a cat, it was a porch cat showed up, and uh, she was a lady cat, and the other cats that are around here are boy cats, and I was like, well, I better take her inside before she gets pregnant, and it, it turns out I was late, and um, either there's a kitten outside, or, or there's um, strange noises coming from in my house, so um, I'm going to... I'm going to put this conversation at the end, but uh, I'll talk to you again some other time if you'd like. I'd like that. Um, congratulations to Sylvia. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Mazel tov. Mazel tov.